Good afternoon and welcome to our Churches Together service for the 75th anniversary of the BE Day. I'm joined here at the War Memorial in Barrow by the Reverend Bowen Haldane from Barrow Baptist Church, by Councillor Eric Ellingworth from the Par Parish Council, and I am Reverend Clive Watts from the Barrow and Wolds Group of Church. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. On this day, at this hour, we commemorate the 75th anniversary of VE Day. We give thanks for all who played their part in achieving victory in the Second World War. We remember with sorrow all those who were killed and whose lives were changed forever. Almighty God, grant, we ask, that those who here do honour to the memory of those who died in the service of their country and of the Crown may be so inspired by the spirit of their love and fortitude that forgetting all selfish and unworthy motives, we may live only to your glory and to the service of humankind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us remember those who so selflessly gave their lives at home and abroad, whose sacrifice enables us to enjoy the peace and freedom we have today. Let us remember those who came home wounded, physically and mentally, and the friends and family who cared for them. Let us remember those who returned to restore the relationships and rebuild their working lives after years of dreadful conflict and turmoil. Let us remember the families that lost husbands, sons and sweethearts. Let us remember the servicemen, merchant seamen, miners, brave civilians and others from the Commonwealth and allied countries who fought, suffered and died during six years of war. Let us remember those in reserved occupations and the brave people who kept us safe on the home front, the doctors the nurses who cared for the wounded, the women and men who toiled in the fields, those who worked in the factories, who all played such a vital role in the war effort at home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.
All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all families of the nations shall bow before him. The following are extracts from Sir Winston Churchill's speech of the 8th of May, 1945. Yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m. at headquarters, General Yodel, the representative of the German High Command, and Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe the Allied Expeditionary Force and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday, May the 8th, but in the interests of saving lives, the ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded all along the front and our dear Channel Islands are also to be freed today. The German war is therefore at an end. After years of intense preparation, Germany hurled herself on Poland at the beginning of September 1939, and in pursuance of our guarantee to Poland and an agreement with the French Republic, Great Britain, the British Empire, and the Commonwealth of Nations declared war upon this foul aggression. After gallant France had been struck down, we, from this island, and from our united empire, maintained the struggle, single-handed, for a whole year, until we were joined by the military might of Soviet Russia, and later by the overwhelming power and resources of the United States of America. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing, but let us not forget for a moment the toil and efforts that lie ahead. We must now devote all our strength and resources to the completion of our task both at home and abroad. Advance, Britannia! Long live the cause of freedom! God save the King! Seventy-five years ago, on this day, the end of war in Europe was declared. The end to six years of fighting. The end to a barrage of fear that bombing brought the end to the killing of thousands on battlefields. And the announcement brought hope. Hope of seeing loved ones again. Hope of being able to live without fear. Hope of peace. There were many lessons to be learned from those days. Some we've taken to heart. Some have been forgotten. But a few things stand out. How destructive the human condition could be. How power and greed can corrupt and destroy in the worst ways. But also how much we need one another. To support one another. To be able to live in peace with one another. Throughout the history of God's people, we see him calling them more and more towards this ideal. By the time of Jesus, they'd learnt not to punish beyond the crime. But Jesus called them to forgive. To live well with each other. In all of this, we can hear something for today and something for the future. Today, we are together in another fight, not against each other, but against an unseen enemy. 
and we again see that people are pulling together. Many have felt the benefits of when we come round each other and support one another. And this day reminds us that we may go through dark days in our lives, but there is hope of better things to come. And it's not only our neighbours who are there to support us, but even more than that, God who is over all things wants you to know that he is there for you, willing to walk beside you through it all. In the Gospel of John are recorded the words of Jesus. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Which remind us that a day of peace will be declared, not just in Europe, not just the formal end of war, but a day when God's kingdom will be established and we can live in complete peace, in good relationship with one another and with God himself. And God invites him, us to join him in that. He has declared peace. It's up to us to put down our arms and live in that reality. We can have hope for the future because we place our hope in him. So let us pray. Make your ways known upon earth, Lord God. Your saving, your saving power, power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness. And, and help, help us serve, serve you with joy. joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation. That, that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy be forgotten. Nor, nor the, the hope of the poor taken away. away. Uphold all those who fall. And, and raise, raise up those who are bowed down. down. Look upon the sorrowful and the oppressed. And, and grant, grant them, them the help, help for which, which they long. Make us instruments of your peace. And, and let, let your, your glory be over all the earth. earth. Day by day we bless you. We, we praise, praise your, your name, name forever. forever. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. And let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of humanity, that we may comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God, God our, our Father, Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all your peoples in the cause of peace for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful, now and always. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.